We've got tips and recipes for healthy living. So for fun and inspiration, come and join us in the raw food world. Welcome everybody, this is Matt Monarch with the Raw Food World TV show and we are still in Steve Pavlina's house and Angela said she wants to ask Steve a question and Steve has no idea what this question is and he says he's down to answer without a problem. <laughs> what am I going to mess up into? Can you guys get a look? Maybe get a look. Sure. Um, yeah, just one thing. I know that you're um, a member of Toastmasters and that you do really great stuff with that. Like you win a lot of awards or something, right? Like. Well, you mean like doing speech contests or something? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Cool. So, what I wanted to ask was, what would be your top tips for public speaking? Oh, I'd say the number one is, is be authentic. Mm. Be yourself. A lot of the stuff I learned in Toastmasters, I don't even use it now, because it just goes contrary to who I am, who I feel like on the inside. Mm. Uh, a friend of mine who's coming over today, actually in 20 minutes, is the 2001 world champion of public speaking in Toastmasters, mm. Darren LaCroix. Wow. And so his number one tip, I can tell you what that would be, uh -huh. would be stage time, stage time, stage time. That's what he always says. And he says that th you will become more authentic as a speaker when you just get up on the stage and you just practice. Uh -huh. and he had a mentor that told him early on in his, his career, he said, never turn down a speaking engagement, even if it's free, even if you have to drive across town for it. So he was always going to all these speaking engagements. He got so much practice that he got really, really good with it. Uh -huh. And I've noticed that too. It's like, as you get a lot of practice, it helps you become more authentic because ultimately, you want to unlearn all the tips and techniques you learn about speaking because mm -hmm. you can just get up on a stage and be fully present and fully yourself. Mm -hmm. It's all about authenticity. It's all about just being able to be who you are and feel comfortable with a thousand eyes staring at you. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, there we go. That's it. Because <laughs> so, I remember you have all these different podcasts on, on stevepavlina.com and I remember listening to one of them. I think it was called like speaking in public or something like that. Do you remember, oh, confidence, something about... Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah, something like that. And I remember there was something in there that really spoke to me, and it was something you were saying along the lines of um, feeling uncomfortable speaking in front of a group of people. It seems like a really unnatural thing. It's like something that we learn, mm -hmm. like to feel unnatural speaking in front of people. And just, that, yeah, it was something about learning to settle into that. So And that, yeah, that really yeah. resonated for me. Another way I think of it is that I'm, if I'm, let's say I'm speaking to a group of 200 people, I think of myself as just having a conversation with 200 individuals mm -hmm. because each person in the room is perceiving it as just one person talking to them. Mm -hmm. So I don't say things like, um, how are all of you doing today? Mm -hmm. Because for each person in the room, that's a very strange question to ask. <laughs> so I would just say, how are you doing today? Like you're talking to an individual mm -hmm. and it's just multiplied applied a couple hundred times. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. All right. That's all I wanted to ask. Is there anything you want to ask, Mr. Monarch? Um, I don't know. Maybe we can think of something more juicy here. <laughs> Not controversial enough for you. <laughs> yeah. <Maybe> more drama. <laughs> um, I know you in your recent blogs lately. You've been talking about relationships a bit. Uh -huh. Um, and you're talking a little bit about um poly. Polyamory. Uh -huh. Yeah. Do you feel like touching on upon that? Is that like? I don't know. Longer than a ten minute YouTube video. <laughs> um, you know, one thing I'll say about it is that I was really amazed at the effect it had just opening myself up to that on my relationship with Erin. And she felt she felt the same way. It's like as soon as we opened ourselves up to the idea of of oneness, that our relationship doesn't have to be something exclusive that we're like constantly blocking other people from being able to connect with us, whether it's an emotional connection, a physical connection, whatever. Um, as soon as we got past that and said, let's just let all that go. You know, we know we love each other. We know we're committed to each other. We have this like, you know, commingled purpose in life we're moving forward on. Um, and when we let all that go, you know, we let all that, the, that attachment go, it, it brought us so much closer in a way we just didn't expect. Wow. Because now, all the resentment got, was gone. It's like overnight, all the resentment we had, all that attachment, all that needing to control each other, like, oh, I need Erin to be a certain way, otherwise she can't be my wife. You know, she needs me to be a certain way, otherwise I'm a bad husband to her. It's like all that just gone, evaporated. And, and what happened is we took responsibility for meeting our own needs. So it's like if I have a need and she's not willing to meet it, why do I have to force her or compel her or convince her to meet my need? That's my problem. It's not hers. It's not fair to her to do that. So if I want to go out and have a certain type of relationship experience, 
relating with a person on a different level than I can get with her. It doesn't diminish her. It doesn't diminish the value of our relationship at all. It just, it just opens me up to, to getting a new kind of connection. Mm. And so you know, that, that's, that's how I really thought of it. I know some people really get hung up on the, the whole physical <laughs> connection, sexual aspect of it because that's where they're focusing. That's what it would mean to them if they were right. to do that. Right. I really think that people who are fo so focused on that are probably not ready for, for it. It's like not something they should probably be getting into because it's more of an emotional thing. Mm. It's really just being able to connect with people, even people you just meet for the first time. And being able to think, okay, you and I are like, you know, we're both two, two individual cells in the larger body of humanity. We, you know, we share something in common. There's already a connection. We don't have to break the ice. It's already broken. Mm -hmm. Or there is no ice to begin with. Mm -hmm. And just being able to allow those connections to flow instead of labeling them in something that says monogamy, you know, marriage. Just, just opening yourself up. So that's, that's been the biggest, uh, I think, benefit is just opening ourselves up to whatever's going to happen. I remember listening to another podcast with, with the both of you actually speaking about this and one of the things that really touched me in that was you were speaking about um, yeah getting different roles fulfilled by different people mm -hmm. and that really spoke to me you know it's like if if your life partner isn't fulfilling some kind of role yeah trying to force that person to do that is just I mean that's not going anywhere so it, you know getting somebody else in your sphere that's that's filling that role just seems to make more sense yeah absolutely but you have to you have to go into it with this attitude of love you're mm -hmm. not trying to take advantage of anyone or abuse anyone if you go into it without a good alignment with truth and you're going into lying to people trying to hide who you are mm -hmm. you know hide the fact you're married mm -hmm. <laughs> and just try to you know try to have flings on the side that's just totally the wrong mindset that's it'll just backfire on you you'll just create a big mess and you're gonna hurt a lot of people doing that too mm -hmm. If you go into it honestly and you say, you know, I just want to connect with more people mm -hmm. and I'm going to keep myself open to that. And if other people think that that's wrong and they have an issue with it, that's fine. That's their, that's their thinking and, you know, uh, that's not where I'm going to go. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, but I've noticed that other people, um, especially raw food, is, I've, I've been really surprised how much the raw food community has been um, non-judgmental about this idea. Mm -hmm. Most of the judgment I, I get comes from people in other communities. <laughs> but raw food is tend to be pretty open to it because I think the diet helps to purify ourselves and, the, and it gets us in that idea that there's a there's a greater oneness that's right. connecting us all. Mm -hmm. Sure. So there's loads of really great podcasts on Steve and Erin's sites which are connected as well. So um, I would recommend checking those out. I've yeah picked up some great ideas from you guys listening to those podcasts. So thank you. Glad to be of help. <laughs> great. I was kind of a little bit nervous to ask that question. And <laughs> I'm glad it went well. <laughs> All right. I guess we could wrap that one up. Sure. Again, we've got... Angela Six. And Steve Pavlina. And Matt Monarch. And we'll see you tomorrow at the Raw Food World TV show. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again at the Raw Food World.